if people inside the government don't tell you, the people, about what we're doing, you have no way to know. If I didn't write a book about the waste and mismanagement in Iraq, who could tell you that? Who would tell you that? And that places a different obligation on government employees, an obligation that President Obama in 2008 said was something that was very important to him, that federal employees speak out. Hello, Peter Van Buren, formerly of the State Department, said the government's reaction to his opinions wasn't surprising, but still a surprise. With what he calls McCarthy-like tactics, the government threw at Van Buren all of its electronic tools and its nastiness in order to silence his whistleblowing. So what happened? Peter Van Buren openly criticized the U.S. government's efforts to reconstruct Iraq. He also commented on how the U.S. dealt with Gaddafi pre-Arab Spring and post-Arab Spring. As a member of the State Department, that is a no-no. So what did he say? In 2009 and 2010, Van Buren was the head of two teams that went to investigate reconstruction projects in Iraq. When he got back, he wrote a book called We Met Well, How I Helped Lose the Battle for the Hearts and Minds of the Iraqi People. Peter Van Buren went on to continue exposing State Department waste and mismanagement in his blog, WeMetWell.com. And what really set the State Department in a tizzy were comments he made regarding the U.S. involvement and the demise of Muammar Gaddafi. Van Buren quoted Hillary Clinton as saying, We came, we saw, he died, and then she started to laugh. What's more, he noted the hypocrisy of the administration in selling military spare parts to Gaddafi, according to a 2009 cable released by WikiLeaks. No doubt at least some of that machinery was used against the Libyan people when they rose up against Gaddafi two years later. And it was a link to that cable on Van Buren's blog that got the State Department to take a second look at him in the first place. My book was approved by the Department of State, and more importantly, the Constitution of the United States protects free speech. What the State Department is trying to terminate me for, calling it bad judgment is in fact core political speech, the very basis of the First Amendment, the right of people in America to criticize their own government. When I took my oath of office 24 years ago, it was to the Constitution, not to Hillary Clinton. Only after filing a complaint with the Office of Special Counsel, and only after the Office of Special Counsel decided to investigate further and file charges, did the State Department propose the removal of Peter Van Buren. According to the attorney for Van Buren, Jessalyn Raddick, throughout each of their retaliatory actions taken against Peter Van Buren, they've studiously avoided mentioning the First Amendment, which clearly prohibits all of this. After 24 years of working at the State Department, Peter Van Buren is facing blowback from his expose, which the State, Depar Depar which the State Department dubs bad judgment and also is calling into question the rationale of allowing him access to information deemed sensitive to national security. But what's more, all Van Buren did was link to cables already widely available on the internet thanks to WikiLeaks. In reality, the State Department is now having to backpedal to rectify their mistake of letting the book be published in the first place, letting it slip by its 30-day probation period. Its 30-day probation period. And if the government can't get Julian Assange, then at least they can go after his supporters. But all but all's it is, is more pie in the face for the Obama administration and its support for whistleblowers. This is obvious in the handling of the Van Buren case. And as his attorney, Jessalyn Raddick, points out, We found out that the State Department's internal office of investigation has been investigating not the State Department's First Amendment violations against my client, but rather Mr. Van Buren himself. Fortunately for Van Buren, charges have yet to be filed. Unfortunately for the Obama administration, the only thing to support when it comes to American whistleblowers and the American Constitution is silencing them. Yet again, the American government shows itself to be a hypocrite, as Van Buren points out.
Go there ahead. are hundreds of State Department blogs. This is the era of, of the Internet, and many of our young people who are coming aboard have lived their life on the Internet. They don't know a world without it. Of these hundreds of blogs, in fact, the State Department chooses to link on its careers website to about 20 or 30 of them and never expects preclearance on any of those things because those blogs say things that the State Department likes. It's dissenting speech that they don't like, and they bring out their guns of prior restraint. At the end of the day, Van Buren says he has no regrets about what he did. It's tragic it takes a crisis to get people to change the way they think. But it's even more tragic it takes a whistleblower to expose the crisis in the first place. The recent scandals in Afghanistan are a sign of the fatigue of the U.S. military and also a breakdown of the command structure, including the President of the United States. But at least people are now starting to take another look at how government is run or is not run. Thank you.